Hello and welcome back to Commercial Radio. So today we're looking at lecture three of 10 of Airtime. And what we've been looking at so far as we started with the RAMS or the radio audience measure. Okay, and after that, in the previous lesson, we looked at radio media planning, booking radio media, and in the case that something might go wrong, we looked at compensation, right? So what did we say about these? We said that radio media planning is the science and the art of knowing where, when, and how um, to execute a paid radio advertising campaign on different radio stations. And it's put together either by the client or the client's media agency. Most clients do use uh, media agencies to do their media planning, to do their radio media planning for them. And for someone to put together a radio media planning for you, they need to know the target of your brand, the campaign period, um, the duration of the material, the budget, your reach and your frequency objectives and your environment. Okay, and there can be multiple channels that they could utilize. So a basic media plan might have radio, television and some out of home but it could also have a lot of other elements in it. And we spoke about frequency. We said that frequency is the average number of times that a listener will hear an advert. And we said that it takes the average person about three listening occasions to really start taking in the message, okay? And that's why we put in the spots, how many spots we're playing, placing on radio. Then we looked at how to take a client's brand target market with the media planning principles and how to create a plan, how to create this media plan. And in this plan, we looked at the stations chosen, the time channel selected, the approach to the types um, of shows that the ads will be played on. And we looked at the different types of radio advertising that will be utilized. And then we looked at the pros and cons to radio advertising, and we saw that the the pros, the advantages far outweighed the disadvantages or the negative side, the negative elements. Then we looked at how to how a new radio plan will move from the client to where it will be placed on air and actually played and then to the um, post campaign analysis and compensation negotiations if something went wrong. So what is compensation? We said that compensation is either monetary or value in kind or more um, that we award to an organization for a job. So in radio, if something wasn't flighted or it was flighted incorrectly, um, we will try to make it up to the client and recompense will need to be made. Okay. So here we might give you your money back, but that's a last case scenario. So we'd rather try and double up and give you more, okay? Um, double your worth for what was played or rather what wasn't played, depending on what happened. And there's several reasons why compensation might be needed. So if a spot um, didn't fly on the radio due to the radio station's own technical failure, if a spot was loaded in the incorrect time slot, so this could be human error, or if the incorrect spot was played. And this is why flighting codes exist. Again, okay? this is why flighting codes are so important. Now looking at the airtime sales team. So that's on page 381. That's where we're starting today, the airtime sales team. There are three players in the radio airtime sales process. We're going to look at those now. Depending on the size of the client, they will most likely make their airtime bookings through a media agency where media planners, buyers, strategists, and analysts work. Okay, if we group them together, we call them media practitioners. Many smaller clients will, however, book their airtime directly with the radio stations team, with the radio's airtime sales team. So these are the three players in the radio airtime sales process. The client, media agency, radio airtime sales team. 
So the client, they hold the budget for the radio advertising. They have a brand strategy to sell a product or a service. So they start this whole process off. They'll then go to a media agency. The media agency manages the radio advertising budget on behalf of the client. And they negotiate with the radio station and make the advertising bookings. And then the radio airtime sales team are the ones who generate revenue for the radio station. They have targets that they need to achieve in order to make a commission and they implement the radio airtime bookings on air and online. So again, that's the three players um, in the radio sales, in the radio airtime sales process. So client, media agency, radio airtime sales team. An airtime sales team can be structured in different ways, depending on how much business it is looking after and how many radio stations and geographical regions it's selling across. Smaller radio stations will have one or two sales executives working under the head of sales, um, but larger groups of radio stations, for instance, Prime Media Broadcasting or SABC, which also stands for the South African Broadcasting Corporation, um, in South Africa, will have larger teams of sales executives and business unit managers of various levels of seniority managing a variety of clients with different budgets and advertising needs. This is an example of, of a typically large sales team that would look after several radio stations. So whether it be an SABC or a Prime Media. So what do we have here? We have the head of sales, national sales manager, regional sales managers, agency sales team managers or business unit manager, the direct sales team manager, or the government sales team manager, and we're going to speak about that now. And then below them, you have the exec account executives, sales assistants. And then below them, you have the account executives and the sales assistants. In large radio portfolios, they are likely to be national or multi-regional radio stations covering more than one province in terms of their listenership, as well as smaller radio stations that are limited to one province or a city and its surrounds. In this figure, the national sales team, the national sales manager ensures that um, each region is mining its relevant clients sufficiently, okay, to meet provincial or regional targets. The manager provides the support to each region to ensure that sufficient sales activities um, is being drawn from the relevant region that the radio station is covering. So, for example, at the SABC, the regional sales uh, manager in charge of Limpopo will need to ensure that Tubelo FM, Mungana Lunene FM and Palapala FM are securing sufficient sales from the Limpopo region as these three stations broadcast across the Limpopo province. The agency sales team looks after advertising revenue coming from media agencies. So the advertising sales team, the first green ones there. They work with the media practitioners to sell advertising on their radio stations to the agency that is managing a brand's particular budget um, for radio. The types of advertisers working in this way in South Africa include big banks such as um, FMB or APSA, fast moving consumer goods companies like Unilever, um, P&G, Coca-Cola, and Tiger Brands, and then the motor companies and the cell phone providers, like for instance, Vodacom and MTN. The direct sales team looks after the advertising revenue coming from the smaller businesses and brands that might not use an agency for their radio advertising. So these brands control their advertising directly. So the marketing manager or the brand manager um, at the business will deal directly with the sales representative from the direct sales team. The types of advertisers working in this way in South Africa would be independent 
uh, small businesses, and this could be restaurants or nightclubs, um, event production companies, ad advertising parties and plumbers, welders, any other um, service business or relevant franchise stores that are interested in very specific advertising for a limited period of time. Government sales is a key area of relevance, particularly for the SABC in South Africa, as government departments, ministries and municipalities all have a marketing budget that they need to spend. The SABC is particularly relevant to South African government marketing efforts because it can communicate to the entire nation, both in terms of its total reach across the country and its ability to communicate in all 11 official languages. As a result, the SABC has a dedicated division of sales executives that manage government clients. Government advertising ranges from information about health, water, sanitation, and arts and cultures in fairs to the election period advertising, which adheres to very strict regulations set up by the Independent Electoral Commission of South Africa. Within each of these teams, there are several account executives who are, tasks, who are tasked with managing specific clients and brands based on the size of their expenditure. Account executives carry the day-to-day -day, uh, activity and have targets to reach. Account executives carry the day-to-day -day activity and have their own targets to reach. Radio stations differ in terms of how they set up these targets. So there are client targets and there are station targets. Some radio stations set client targets where the um, account executive has a minimum monthly target to extract from each client they manage. So for example, an account executive looking after APSA needs to ensure that they extract a specific amount um, monthly and annually um, from that particular brand across any radio station that they are able to book time on within their radio portfolio. Other radio stations set station targets, where the account executive has monthly targets um, that they need to deliver to the radio station themselves. For example, an account executive would have a sales target for Heart FM and would need to achieve um, that target across different client spending on the station in that month. Sales assistants provide valuable administrative services to ensure that the account executives, the business unit managers and the regional sales managers can close their deals and mine any leads they might have. They generate the booking contracts, follow up with messages, um, schedule sales meetings and presentations, and they deal with inquiries. All members of the sales team directly, all members with the sales team deal directly with the programming and the marketing teams sitting at each radio station in the portfolio. The relationship between the sales and programming is critical to the success of the radio station and its ability to deliver the client's objectives. So it's really important that sales and programming guys work very closely together. So what is a brand? We want to sell a brand, but what is a brand? A brand is the thing that allows us to charge a premium that consumers are willing to pay for a product or a service beyond what it costs to create that product or to, to deliver that service. So according to Valerie Geller, it's the collection of emotions and beliefs that come to mind if a person sees a radio station's logo or meets one of its personalities. A radio station's brand is its promise to its listeners. That means that every platform that the radio station uses to communicate must keep the promise of that station. If the station promises to be fun for the family, then it can't deliver content or speak in a tone that 
is inappropriate for children. If the station promises the best in modern music from around the world, then it must deliver in the latest music across multiple genres and music trends. If a listener tunes into a radio station expecting to listen to the type of content that the radio brand promises and then gets something else, that station is cheating that listener out of something. The station is breaking its brand promise. A salesperson, just as much as the radio station manager or radio personality, is an ambassador of a radio station. Salespeople are also known as radio sales executives. They contact customers to explain the benefit of marketing on the radio. They prepare and deliver sales presentations, recommend advertising formats and broadcast lengths, estimate costs, and process all paperwork and correspondence. There are frontline people who have to portray the radio station's brand in the boardrooms and at industry events where clients are likely to be and where their budgets will be allocated to certain types of media. If the salesperson doesn't understand and portray the radio station's brand, then they won't be able to deliver on the brand promise. This will likely result in less money for the station from those clients. All good salespeople know their radio listenership figures. Okay, they all know their station numbers. Um, they can present this particular listenership of a certain show host. Mm -mm, scrap. They can present the particular listenership of a certain show host or time slot as the best option for a client's investment. They can demonstrate how the various objectives the client might have for their radio advertising campaign can be cost effectively met by the radio station so that the client feels they're getting a better deal than by going to competitors. There's a common assumption that radio stations um, that have the most listeners should also be making the most advertising revenue. That assumption is often untrue. I'm going to show you why I'm saying so now. So before we look at that though, um, how do radio stations with fewer listeners often make more money? They have sellable and appealing brands. There's something about the radio, about such a radio station that appeals to the client and make them to the clients and makes them more willing to pay more per set of ears for that station than for another. And that thing is branding. It's essential that salespeople know as much about the radio station's brand and promise to its listenership as they do about their radio station's listenership size and makeup, okay? So let's go look at this example, um, 10A on page 385. So what does this example say? At the top there, it says revenue versus listenership, a comparison of figures for South African radio. If a radio station sells its audience, then it follows that the station with the biggest listenership will attract the most revenue, right? That's not always true in the South African radio context. So what we have here on page 385 is the top five radio stations in terms of their listenership numbers in South Africa. What you will see if you look at example 10A on page 385 is that the top five radio stations in terms of the listenership numbers in South Africa only represent one of the top five positions in radio station um, revenue earnings. So we're looking at the top five biggest is Ukozi FM, Metro FM, Mslobo Wenene FM, Lesedi FM, and Motswading FM. And they range from 7.1 million listeners to 3.1 million listeners. But then if we look at who the top five richest radio stations in South Africa are, it's first and foremost, it's 947. Secondly, it's Jacaranda. Third is Metro, of which is the second biggest um, radio station in South Africa. Fourth is KFM and fifth is East Coast Radio. There are several reasons um, for this, 
but the most impactful of these is the radio station's brand. Building a clear and purposeful brand for a radio station is essential for, um, for establishing it in the minds and the hearts of the listeners and the clients. Therefore, investing in a radio station's brand and ensuring that um, and ensuring that it delivers on its brand promise will mean that a radio station sales team will be able to ex uh, extract a higher price for its advertising. Each radio station in South Africa has the same number of operating hours in a day in which to sell advertising. So where these, where these stations do differ though is isn't how much they can charge for advertising or where they can implement creative or bespoke um, solutions for clients who want something more than an advertising campaign. So that was example 10A. Now let's look at developing relationships, okay? One reason why salespeople are hired is because of their network of contacts. A network must be maintained and added to at all time. It's a moving, changing, dynamic thing. If a salesperson is always calling their contacts because they want something though, they'll find it very difficult to maintain a happy network. If you are responsible for sales, then you must in um, invest time and effort into really knowing and understanding the people in your network, helping them out when they have business challenges and celebrating their successes with them when they win. It's often the small things that mean the most to people. Many radio station, uh, many radio sales people sell their products person to person. So what makes a great salesperson? What differentiates them? They are people who have mastered the art of personal connections and skilled networking. As Valerie Geller says, developing relationships is an important part of prospecting and growing sales contacts. There's a balance that you have to strike as a salesperson. You need to be aggressive in pursuing your targets and getting to know new people, but you also need to be considerate in not hounding people. In today's globalized society, people are also moving around so much um, and changing jobs more often than they used to. So a salesperson has to maintain up-to-date records of where exactly each of their contacts is currently working and on what brands. A sales target or a client should feel as if the seller is interested in more than just the money that they're going to receive from them. Businesses are managed by people. And while data will inform the decisions of those people, their emotions and personal connections might also influence their business decisions. If you get a person on your side, you will get their business. Developing relationships with people involve understanding their business challenges and um, priorities. The process of developing relationships involves a few fundamental golden rules. And let's look at these. The first one there, a salesperson should know their business. A radio salesperson needs to be an expert in the brand and the product of their radio station. They should know the listenership figures, the lineup of the station, digital metrics and features of every show to the letter and by heart. A radio salesperson should be able to match a product or a service to a particular time channel, um, on air personality or feature within a few minutes after learning about a new product or service. They should also be able to find a space for that product or that service on their station and clearly see in their mind how it could play out for the station's listenership, maintaining their interests and choosing, choosing relevant products for them to be represented with. Secondly, a salesperson should know their client's business. Okay, so you should know your own business, but you should know the client's business. A potential client is always going to know more about their own product or service um, 
that the company sells, then you as the radio representative or radio salesperson will know. You should still learn as much as you can about their product or service so that when you do get the right person's attention, um, you have something relevant or useful to contribute to your conversation with the, that person. Also, when a salesperson is starting to build a relationship with a potential client, it's important that they be careful not to make assumptions. So for instance, they should never assume that what, that what they know about the product and and how they use it is the same for everyone. Number three there, a salesperson should be helpful. Salespeople shouldn't approach a potential client with the idea of extracting money from them. Rather, they should always aim to find a solution to their client's business problem by determining what that problem is, for instance, what the client's true need is, and using their radio station to solve it. Okay. In this way, a salesperson should always um, hand over a solution rather than hold out their hand for money. So come up with a solution. Sometimes this is a solution that the client didn't even know that they needed. And then as a salesperson, you need to be flexible. Although a radio station has a red card, um, this doesn't mean that a client's concepts or plans fit neatly into the, that mold. Salespeople need to be able to be flexible, willing to adjust and amend airtime if need be. A salesperson should never simply refuse to accept a sale just because it's something new and something different that hasn't been implemented on the radio station before. If the salesperson isn't sure how to make it work for that station, they should commit to a deadline to come back to a client and engage with other members of the sales team um, and even the programming team to determine how to implement what it is that the client wants. In this way, they should always return with an offer so as not to lose the chance of a sale. A salesperson should use testimonials. If the radio station has built good relationships with clients in the past, then it would be a great opportunity to showcase those good relationships with potential clients. In other words, a salesperson should make use of a satisfied client's um, testimonials as positive references to help them build trust with new clients. Testimonials take the fear out of buying and it makes it easier to close. These golden rules contribute to the skill and the art of developing relationships. Every person you meet might be a worthwhile person to add to your network. It's always good to invest in potential clients and to try and build good relationships with them. They might not be interested in being your client right now, but they may be someday, or they could refer you to other potential clients. So but that brings us to the end of today's lecture. And in a nutshell, what we looked at was the airtime sales team, which consisted of three. We looked at the airtime sales team, which consisted of three players, namely the client, the media agency, and the radio, um, the radio airtime sales team. And we said that with regards to the airtime sales team, um, they have both client targets and station targets. And then we mentioned how important brand knowledge is and what a brand is. So a radio station's brand is its promise to its listeners. We mentioned that a salesperson is an ambassador for a radio station and that they can also be known as uh, radio sales executives. And then we spoke about how important it is to develop relationships and that it's often the smallest things that mean the most to people. So that's something to keep in mind going forward. That's all for today though. So in the next lesson, we're going to be continuing with um, buying, selling and executing airtime. And we'll be looking at commission and we'll be looking at commission as well as sales versus programming. 
So for now, I'm going to say goodbye until next time. Bye.